than a proper or a comprehensive risk assessment. And let me also add that the operations themselves in the main were not at risk. That is, the mining operations in the main were not at risk. What actually occurred on uh, April 7th was at our mill expansion project site. So, um, in sympathy or in empathy with the victim, we decided to, first of all, shut down operations completely. And then, secondly, do a proper risk assessment, make sure that employees are in the right frame of mind. We had the, um, the right safety discussions before we did operations. So can you estimate how much the temporal shutdown had to cost the company in terms of revenue? To be honest, our focus has not really been on counting the cost of um, production time loss. Our focus was really managing um, the affected family, managing um, the other co-workers um, or the, the other employees who were left, trying to get their spirits up, providing counseling services, supporting the families through this difficult phase. So that has been our focus all this while. That has been our preoccupation all this while. All right, thank you very much for your time. Agba Kukwame Azuma is Newmont's Ghana's Communication and External Relations Manager. Still in business, former president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry has on behalf of the private sector in Ghana commended government for its effort at harnessing the economy and creating an enabling environment for private sector growth. According to Dr. Seth Ejeba, the lack effect of the reduction in the monetary policy rates, which reflects the cost of banking efficiency in the banking sector, is a major concern to the private sector. Speaking to GH1 Television, Dr. Seth Ejeba said the Chamber welcomes the reduction of the monetary policy rate by 200 basis points to 18% by the Bank of Ghana, explaining that access to cheap credit is fundamental to the growth and development of businesses, particularly for SMEs and startups, where they are encouraged by low interest rates to increase their level of investment over a certain period of time. If government does not give the right environment, no matter how good you are, you cannot make it. We think government has started something. Uh, the indications are that interests are coming down. They have reduced the cost of electricity. All other indications being equal, coming down, definitely the private sector will be able to thrive and do more for the development of this country. Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan Kujutra Mating, has promised business owners that government will do all it can to harmonize Ghana's economy in order to sustain the gains made in the country's trade balance. The chamber is working very closely with government in the implementation of some of the most significant flagship programs that the government has introduced. It is my hope and wish that we'll continue working together as a chamber and also the private sector in general and deepen our collaboration to be able to move Ghana beyond aid. That's it for business, but coming up now is sports. So Deputy Sports Minister Pius Enam Hajide said his hands are clean following the visa racketeering scandal that rocked Ghana's participation in the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast, Australia. Pius Enam Hajide and the Acting Director General of the National Sports Authority, Robert Safo Mensah, were suspended yesterday by President Ekufuado over the scandal. Meanwhile, some members of the public have been reacting to the suspension of the Deputy Sports Minister. Have a look. I think it's in the right direction so that in, if any other people are trying to do anything that is uncalled for, then they will know that the president is serious about what he's talking about, corruption and other things. And I think it's, the, it's, it's on the right direction. Yeah, that's a very good thing because it is never done anywhere. And you have been appointed to save the mother, mother Ghana, Ghana 
and what it did was a fiasco. It's a very good thing they decided to do that because it's a very big problem in Ghana here. The corruption is too much. I think the deputy sportsman to report to the society minister, which is the minister itself. So I'm wondering why they will suspend the deputy and leave the society minister. So, like I said already, it's a very good move. And I don't know whether that ministry is a mafia ministry or uh, we have the Mutaka issue, the Afri Ankara issue. Uh, there's a woman there, I for, even forget the name, and all these things. So they have to look proper what is the meaning. And it's disgrace to the nation. Joining me in the studio is Henry Asante Chum. He's the head of sports at Star FM. Henry, welcome. So you heard Thank those you people. So Do you think the steps taken by the president yesterday are adequate enough to unravel all the issues surrounding our participation in the Commonwealth Games? Well, I think so. Um, I think the president needs that public confidence, first of all, so you need to crack the hip. You must show the way, you must show the people that indeed you are on top of your job and you are ready to check um, you know, public officials who do not do things right. Um, when the, the story broke somewhere on the 31st of March, there were two names that we've always been hearing. Um, it's always been either the, the, the deputy sports minister or the boss of the National Sports Authority. They vehemently denied when the story broke that they had nothing to do with it. But I don't think that the president um, you know, is stupid for that matter to have asked them to proceed on leave or step aside for investigations but to continue. But ma many have questioned why the sports minister has been left out of all this. Mm. He's the head of everything. Yeah, I you agree. You think it's a fair position I to I agree. Take? I, I, because, because this is an interim investigation. This is a preliminary investigation. I just want to respect the decision of the president for now. If by the time we come to the end of the investigation, we unravel something which you know must cause for the dismissal of the minister himself, I don't have any problem with that. Um, I think I think that you know it all boils down to the fact that the deputy minister was in charge of the committee, the International Games Committee, which the minister put together. Um, the NSA boss himself, Robert Safumenza, was also a member. The president of the Ghana Olympic Committee was a member. The chef de mission, Mohamed Sanun, was also a member. Now these individuals, in one way or the other, have been mentioned in this uh, whole scandal. So the, 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 I mean, the best thing to do is to speak to them, um, and which I know the, the presidency has done, which I know the police service has done, and the initial response or reaction from the presidency is that the deputy minister and the NSA boss have been indicted and they must step aside. We, 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 we understand some more officials have been asked to return home to aid in the investigations. Yes. And you have all the scoop in what's, what's, <laughs> what's happening. Share it with us. Well, um, the board chairman of the National Sports Authority, Honorable Kojo Bajiman, has been asked to um, you know, return. Mm -hmm. And then also the president of the Ghana Olympic Committee has also been asked to come back home. And then the chef de mission, Mohamed Sanu, these three officials have been asked to return home and aid investigation. Now, you cannot, you cannot speak to this issue and leave out the first two names that I mentioned. Maybe the board chairman um, is not directly involved, but I mean, the GOC president, you cannot leave, leave him out. The chef de mission, because the back stop with him. He takes the decision. He approves every single list that they send to Australia. He is in charge of the day-to-day -day administration from day one when they sent the first list to Australia for, uh, for accreditation, for permission, for a permission of entry for all our athletes. He was the one in charge. Now, he is the first vice president of the Ghana Olympic Committee. Right. I don't think he will take a decision without, without the approval of his boss, right. who is the substantive president okay. of the, 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 the Ghana Olympic mm -hmm. Committee. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the two uh, staff of the National Sports Authority who were asked to come home when the story broke, I am talking about Hussein and then um, and Christine, Ashley. Mm -hmm. They are staff of the National Sports Authority. Now, Ashley is the, the Secretary General of the Ghana Weightlifting Association. I, right. I'm just, I, I want yeah, to hope yeah. this analysis makes, will make sense. Makes, Hussein, yeah. Hussein is the Secretary General of the Ghana um, 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 uh, uh, Cycling Association. Now, um, Ashley is also the Secretary General of the Ghana Weightlifting Association. The Weightlifting Association is chaired by the President of the GOC, who is Benu Nomensa. And they were sent home, and the explanation they gave us was that they, they actually entered details or entered data without authorization. So I am asking a simple question. 
who was in charge and who authorized them to enter those details and are they only being sacrificed I'm sure let, let, what, a lot of things will come up. Henry, what is it with the sports ministry and the sports authority that keeps having scandal after scandal? Every government that comes, there's a problem with the sports ministry and so many things. Uh, what, is it, what is it there? Well, it's, it's, it's a ministry which deals with public interest. Um, every single Ghanaian loves sports. It's directed to sports one way or the other. Now, when you are a minister, I think the first thing they must know is that you are a minister, you are a government appointee, you come to work with civil servants. If you misbehave, if you follow them and they lead you into the ditch, you will go and they will still be there. Lastly, before you go, I understand there are some journalists who took money from Ghanaians, ordinary Ghanaians, <laughs> and promised they were going to take them to the Commonwealth well, Games. Uh, as much as 20,000 or 50,000, I don't know how to. Uh, and I'm sure you have the names of those journalists. Um, the, the police is handling the case. Yes, Henry, I have the names. who are those journalists? The police is handling the case. Who are those journalists? <laughs> the police is handling the case. Uh, what I would, no, but what if I, the what police is handling that, the case, you, yes. are, you are a witness, you have information. Yeah. Why are you holding on to it? Um, I, I think that, I think that it, is, it, is, it is premature because um, we also have to get to the other side of the story. I know two people who came to me to complain to me that someone took monies from them and promised to take them to Australia. Upon arrival, they have been sent back home. So they are looking for the person to take their money. I know the person, but I haven't spoken to the person to find out from him his side of the story. And I think it will not be professional to go on air to mention some of these names. But like I said, the police is handling the case. The CID has taken over. Investigations are ongoing. At the appropriate time, I think we will make those names public. All right, thank you very much. Henry Asantichum is the head of sports at Star FM. I'm sure by tomorrow you have all the names and you'll be confident enough to say that's it for you sports. To put me into trouble. <laughs> that's it for sports, but let's bring you to national news now. Preparing to put the late Winnie Madikizela Mandela to her final resting place on Saturday, 14th April. The nation has been in mourning since the news of the disease broke earlier on on April 2nd. The struggle icon will be buried on Saturday in four ways, but her funeral service will be held in Orlando Stadium in Soweto, with thousands expected to attend. Government will outline the logistics later on on Friday. Tributes have been pouring from around the globe before the icon. Meanwhile, Deep Sloot residents are threatening to block the route that Winnie Matikizela Mandela's funeral procession will take. Russia has warned the United States that launching airstrikes in response to a suspected chemical attack in Syria could spark a war between the two countries. Moscow's UN Ambassador Vasily Nembenzia has accused Washington of putting international peace at risk and said the situation was very dangerous. Western powers are thought to be preparing for strikes, but Russia, a Syrian ally, opposes such action. Nebenzia told reporters after a private meeting of the UN Security Council in New York that there was a heightened danger of escalation because of the Russian military presence in Syria. That's it for GH1 News. My name is Sewa Mia. Do join us at 325 for GH1 News updates. Have a good day. Friday on the late afternoon show. How do you lose fat in certain vital areas in your body?